guys, this is Dr. Mubeen. We are continuing our lectures with the T cells and immunology. Today is a very important lecture. Uh, we will be talking about the T cell functions. This is actually in the function and structure of the T cell. This is our last lecture. We will continue on to the B cells after this. And after the B cells, we will be talking about the allergic reactions, organ transplant, or grafting, then the immune system uh, test or various tests and finally we'll go towards the path pathology and pharmacology. So I'm hoping that next few lectures would actually start us towards the conclusion but this is a very important lecture. Not only is this about the T cells but this lecture is also important from this point of view that the T cells are a huge regulator of the immune system. They are participants in the bridging of the innate arm of the immune system to the um, acquired arm. They are also participant in amplifying the innate arm. They are also participant in moving the direction of the immune reaction from immunoglobulin or um, towards the cytotoxic or killer effects. So very important lecture, not just the T cell itself, but really the regulation of the immune system. So in today's lecture, the things that we should be looking for are following. Number one, at the end of the lecture, we should understand why and how various interactions occur between the T cell and other cells. For example, interaction between a macrophage and a T cell, interaction between a T cell and another T cell, for example, cytotoxic T cell, uh, interaction of a T cell with a B cell, for, um, for humoral response and so on. So the interactions of the T cell, number one. Number two, the cytokines released by the T cell. For example, interleukin-2, interleukin-4, interleukin-5, interferon gamma, macrophage inhibitory factors, and macrophage um, activation factors. These are very important cytokines and they play a very important role within the immune system. So number one, interactions, number two, understanding the cytokines, then we would actually go towards the effector function of the T cells itself. And in that effector function, what we are trying to understand is how do the T cells perform two types of actions? So T cell functions can actually be divided into two things. T cell functions can be divided in, we have the effector functions, effector functions and regulatory functions. So very important, all T cell functions, whatever they do, can actually be bucketed, can actually be divided into two types of functions, effector function and the regulatory function. And you as a student and as a medical practitioner and someone who is uh, planning for the USMLE test should be very clear on both of those, that what are these functions, what, is, what does it mean to be an effector cell, and what does it mean to be a regulatory cell, and what is their uh, participation of the T cell in there. So let's talk about it. First of all, before we start the effector and regulatory functions, as I said, we'll start with the interaction of the T cell with the other cells. So let's go through the interactions. This is very important. I think that uh, when you are attempting USMLE, a good number of questions are going to be based on this, that do you understand the interaction of a T cell with another cell, and do you know what it means? Do you know what happens as a result of that interaction? Second, there is a huge number of questions you would find that are about the cytokines, the chemical substances that are released by T cells, and what is their effect. So let's talk about these two factors before we talk about these two functions. So let's go ahead. So first of all, I think we've all established that in our first few immunology lectures, that T cells, when they come out of thymus, these are naive T cells, right? They are naive. They are, I remember I used to make them like this, they look upwards and they're saying, what do I do, <laughs> right? So these are naive helper T cells. So T helper, and they call, they're called zero because they're naive T cells. Naive T cells are actually 
helper cells who yet do not who yet have not become activated and their activation so remember this thing t cell are dynamic in their behavior their commitment towards one type or another can be changed by influencing them through the chemical substances this is a discussion which we had in the early part of immunology lectures so i do not want to repeat that but all i would say is that if il4 is applied to a naive t cell the uh, the t cell would then go towards becoming a t helper 2 cell so very quickly il4 causes the naive t cell to become t helper 2 t helper 2 in turn acts on the b cells and converts them into plasma cells which will release antibodies and that is a humoral response of our body or our immune system on the other hand if a t cell naive t cell helper is applied with or we send interleukin 12 onto this t cell we release interleukin 12 while this was naive and the interleukin 12's effect on the cell will be that this would become t helper 1 so this is an important thing to notice that the naive t cell has a capacity to either become t helper 2 or t helper 1 so it's a dynamic behavior of this thing it's not committed to b1 it's not an rbc now i cannot be a neutrophil because i'm an rbc here you got a naive cell which can become a helper 1 or helper 2 and you know that helper 1 cell in turn would work on many many effector cells for example cytotoxic t cells cytotoxic t cell and then it works on the macrophages and we'll see that it has some influences on eosinophils and so on so again very important concept the first concept delivered and that is a t helper zero or a naive t helper cell can become a t helper two if it is receiving il4 as a stimulant if it receives il12 it will become t helper one cell and then they both have different outcome do you know and we have talked about it so many times and this is something that should be ingrained in your head the b cell action is humoral response and cytotoxic action is the ci cellular response so our body our immune system can react in two ways either in humoral response either via humoral response or via cytotoxic response and it is a T cell which is deciding that immune system is going which way so when you are attempting USMLE and when you are practicing as a doctor in on the hospital floors it depends when you're answering a question or when you're thinking about a patient's situation you have to think about which way the immune system took to respond to a particular problem in the patient Lepromatous leprosy is a very decent example where instead of going the cytotoxic way, instead of going the cellular way, the immune system made a mistake and went the, the uh, humoral way. Immune system responds to lepromatous leprosy uh, mycobacterium, but instead of responding via the cellular mechanisms, it responds through the humoral mechanism. That mechanism doesn't do anything to that pathogen. On the other hand, if it was a cellular mechanism, then the leprosy gets controlled. So this is a very important thing to understand. I hope you keep this in your mind. Now, on this side, what do we have? Again, we've talked about this in the initial parts of the immunology lectures. Let's talk about the interactions today, the T cell interactions. So keep this concept in mind that T helper will become T helper 1 or T helper 2. So now let's see how the interaction occurs. So let's say we have a macrophage. This is my, you know it, that this is my, my macrophage. Scary monster dude, right? So the macrophage decided, not decided, some pathogens came along. These pathogens were playing and having fun. And what did the macrophage do? I think you know macrophage is going to 
phagocytose them, right? Macrophage is going to eat them up. So macrophage phagocytosed the pathogen and inside you know it that it, it would cut it up, it would digest it, it would break it up into smaller pieces, then those smaller pieces will be presented on the surface on MHC2, MHC2 protein. And you're also aware that all professional antigen presenting cells, APCs, professional APCs, what are the professional APCs? Macrophages, dendritic cells, and B cells. These are professional antigen presenting cells. All at professional antigen presenting cells present antigens on MHC2. All nucleated cells present antigens on MHC1, except neurons, these are nucleated but they do not present MHC1, and RBCs which are not nucleated and that is why they do not present MHC1. So here, do you know that one, um, so many students ask me this question, will a macrophage have M MHC1? Yes, it would have MHC1. Why? Because it is a nucleated cell. All nucleated cells have the capabil capability of presenting antigens on MHC1. But the professional APCs have an additional capability of presenting antigen on MHC2. So we'll, we've talked about it, and as we do MHC1 and MHC2 lecture, we'll talk more about this. But let's say this macrophage has eaten up a pathogen, and that pathogen has become digested. Remember, uh, there are lysosomes, and then phagosome and lysosomes, they fuse, and then the enzymes and the reactive oxygen species are poured onto the pathogen. Pathogen thinks that this is a nice hot tub, but at the end of the day, this is a place where it would be cut up into smaller pieces. Those pieces will then be loaded onto the MHC2 in endosomes, and then these will be cycled to the surface. And at one time, about 30,000 to 60,000 MHC2 molecules are present on the surface of the macrophage or, or the ABCs. And these are cycled. These uh, they present the antigen, they, they go back. So let's say a piece of this pathogen, so let's make a small piece here. Let's say this piece of the pathogen that was broken down in here is showing up on the MIC2. So the first interaction of a T helper cell. So let's make a little T helper cell here. This, this T helper cell is naive. It doesn't know what's happening. It's just sitting around waiting for someone to tell it what to do. It needs an objective in its life. So the objective is it is sitting there and you know that the um, T cells and we, the lecture before this is about the T cell receptors. So I think this is going to be the lecture number 10. Lecture number nine is about the T cell receptors. So please go and uh, check that out to understand the structure and the function of the T cell receptor and how it is built. So T cell receptor is present here. T cell receptor is connected with the MIC2 with the antigen. Now the first interaction, this is the primary interaction. Uh, one thing that I should clarify to keep in your mind while you're listening to this lecture is that uh, contrary to humans, so how do humans uh, interact? They handshake, so one hand and they handshake and that's it, that's the interaction. These cells, because their function is dangerous, what is the danger in their function? As soon as they handshake, they start killing and beating up each other. So just imagine you handshake with someone and then all of a sudden you are you're fighting. So these cells have, uh, and our bodies have adapted a mechanism to make sure that it is worth the fight. So there is a double check before the fight starts.